and creation of new cross-border corridors in order to enhance exchange of trade. Another area we intend to work together with our friends and neighbors, particularly in the Republic, is the menace of illegal migration and human trafficking. Niger, as a major transit point, has had to commit huge resources to curb the trend. Nigeria will support the new initiative by the European Union and other stakeholders aimed at combating the menace of illegal immigration and human trafficking. At a joint press briefing, President Hamadou Buhari reassured Nigerians of his commitment to subdue Boko Haram as both leaders welcome the commitment to work with neighboring states. Meanwhile, President Buhari has acknowledged receipt of the Amnesty International report on Nigeria titled Nigeria's Stories of Horror in Their Own Words. The Senior Special Assistant Media and Publicity to the President, Malam Garba Shehu, in a statement in Niamey, Niger Republic, said President Buhari has received the report, which he says contains many disturbing allegations. In the statement, President Buhari assured that his administration will study the document and act appropriately. He said without any prejudice to the outcome of any investigation, Nigerians needed to be reassured that his administration will leave no stone unturned to promote the rule of law and deal with all cases of human rights abuses, respect for human rights, as adherence to the rule of law, uh, the life and soul of the democratic system, the president said. President Buhari assured that his administration will not tolerate or condone impunity and reckless disregard to human rights. The House of Representatives has approved President Mohamed Buhari's request for 15 special advisors to assist government in performance of its functions in a past petroleum industry bill after an exhaustive session. Concerned by the loss of lives and severe injuries infected on many persons in a petrol tanker explosion in Anambra State, the House has urged the Ministry of Health to mobilize the area to provide adequate medical attention for those injured. National Assembly correspondent Ifayo Kafo reports that members resumed consideration of ad hoc committee on evasion of import duties of rice, as well as the report by the committee on, commence, on, on commencement of the Chartered Institute of Capital Market. The House adopted a special precedence on bills transmitted from the Senate to the House, including Nigerian Army Institute of Technology and Environment Studies Bill 2015, National Social Welfare Commission 2015, Labor Safety on Health Bill 2015, and Nigerian Football Association Bill 2015. Last night on News Extra, we brought you a report that two children are at the National Trauma Center, Abuja, having survived a road traffic accident which claimed the life of their mother. Correspondent Isaac Nkuma went back to the trauma center this morning for an update, and this is what he brought back. Baba. Okay. Mm? Visibly shaking, her speech incoherent, five-year-old Sadia was the most stable amongst the three victims brought to the trauma center on Wednesday evening. Her brother Dauru, nine years old, and an unidentified male were still in a critical condition. The number is now four, including the driver of the vehicle who was brought in later. This is the bonds unit at the National Trauma Center of the National Hospital Abuja, where the four victims from that accident have been transferred to because of the various degrees of bonds they have. But this is the farthest we can go, as no one is allowed in except the doctors and nurses. Now, yet no relation has shown up for the children. Actually, we're not even actually asking for money for now because our duty is to save lives. Of course, they are a bit stabilized now. The driver has um, about 70% uh, degree of bond, the other passenger 50% degree of bonds, and um, the little boy, um, the boy 
is about 31, and um, the guy about um, 27 degree of bonds. We might suspect that probably the, there is foil in the vehicle because of um, this uh, degree of bonds. It was confirmed that they were traveling from Port Harcourt River State to Sokoto and route Abuja when a head-on collision occurred along the Lokoja Abaji Abuja Expressway. Isaac Nkuma, NTA News. Thank you, Isaac. As a bid up to the 2015 World Environmental Day, the Federal Ministry of Environment embarked on a roadwork in Abuja to sensitize Nigerians on the need to preserve the environment. Mie Ogide reports that the roadwork, which terminated at the headquarters of NTA, provided opportunity for the Ministry and the Environment, for the Minister of Environment and the NTA to cement relationship on how to enlighten the public on environment-friendly culture. The report. The environment is always described as man's common heritage. Following this description, the environment ought to have been given the best treatment and care. But sadly, it shares the same pains with an orphan. Deforestation, bush burning, and indiscriminate dumping of waste are common sites with attendant effects of climate change and flooding. Consume it! Yeah! Worried by this, the permanent secretary in the Ministry of Environment led other stakeholders on a 10 kilometer roadwork to sensitize Nigerians not to compromise the environment for immediate gains. Bearing in mind the vital role of NTA in this campaign, the ministry visited NTA, where the executive director of programs, Mrs. Eugenia Abu, who stood in for the director general, appealed to Nigerians to imbibe the culture of keeping the environment clean, not only to preserve it, but to have sound health. How do we get affected with malaria? Because we have dirty environment, stagnant waters, refuse dumps. Then we come down with diarrhea, with typhoid fever. When you talk of desertification, we notice that the desert is gradually moving to the south. So the government has put in place a number of things, like the Green Green War, you know, like environmental impact assessment. We are glad to be part of helping you propagate the message. As a people, from time to time, we forget that this is the only planet we have. Modernity is good, but we must remember how our forefathers cared for the environment, cared for the planet which we have inherited today. The theme of this year's World Environment Day is seven billion dreams, one planet consumed with care. In Abuja, Mir Ogidi, NTA News. Up next on Nationwide is Lagos, and Jennifer is standing by with the latest report from that zone. Hello, Jennifer. What is the latest with EFCC and Kashamo? Thank you, Ronke. Good evening, and many thanks for joining us in Lagos. What happens to each and every one of us when we leave the service is what I'm after in the next four years. There will be a lot of opportunities. But, you know, you must work for it. Lagos State Head of Service, Mrs. Falashade Jaji, while praying for a successful tenure, also assured the governor of the workers' loyalty. But he's here, flesh and alive, and looking very happy, as we are also looking very radiant. And I, I can see that it's really going to be a beautiful four years together with a lot of good things for each and every one of us. The governor said he can't ask for more, but for the cooperation of about 128,000 workers of the state. From Lagos, Victoria Olabodi, NTA News. There is now a renewed emphasis on declaration of assets by both public and political office holders. This is evident in the level of compliance by these officers at the Code of Conduct Bureau. In this report, Abdullahi Mohammed examines the mandate of the Code of Conduct Bureau and level of compliance in Lagos. Section 153 of the 1999 Constitution mandates the Code of Conduct Bureau to ensure that both elected and public officers conform with the principles guiding their conduct in office.
while the fifth schedule of the section empowers the Code of Conduct Bureau to collect information regarding assets of office holders with a view to monitor how these officers acquire wealth. Though the Bureau has been existing since 1989, the renewed commitment by both public and political office holders to comply with its mandates going by available statistics is phenomenal. For the governor, he had done that, and the deputy governor, for the State House of Assembly, because they were supposed to be uh, inaugurated today before it was uh, so majority of them had already complied. Many Nigerians have, however, asked the Bureau to make public the declaration of assets by political office holders. But the Bureau says it is not empowered by the Constitution to do so. The Constitution says that the, uh, the ways and manner in which such assets declared by any public officer will be made available to members of the public will be enacted by the National Assembly. And the National Assembly has not enacted any law. Within the next four years, political office holders will execute programs and policies as a result of mandates given to them by the people. But do these people trust that declaration of assets by these political office holders will stamp out corruption? It will not stop corruption. Why? I can't explain. That will stop corruption? Yes, 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 I believe. Why? Because, uh, you know, before appointing you into an office, you need to tell Nigeria what assets you have. Well, the people have spoken, but how the declaration of assets will stamp out corruption remains to be seen. In Lagos, Abdullah Mohammed, NT News. Thank you, Abdullahi, and that report ends a contribution from Lagos. Over to you, Ronke, for more on the news. Thank you so much, Jennifer. The People's Democratic Party, PDP, says it has no candidate for the office of president or deputy president to the 8th Senate. National Publicity Secretary of the PDP, Ulisa Mitu, while speaking with journalists in Abuja, said the party will not interfere with the rules of the National Assembly. Ignatius Nkwo has that report. The decision on who occupies leadership positions in the incoming 8th National Assembly, especially the position of the President of the Senate and Speaker of House of Representatives, has been raging for a while now. This gave way for several conspiracy theories and insinuations. One of them is the perception in some quarters that the PDP has candidates for the positions. But through its National Publicity Secretary, the party refuted such allegation. So the PDP has decided to inform the Nigerian public and Nigerians that the party has no candidate for the position of Senate President and Deputy Senate President. The party said it has discussed with its National Assembly members elect on how to become a formidable opposition. What is important to the PDP at this critical time is how to offer alternatives and options to Nigerians on the policies and programs of the ruling party. Olisa Metu reiterates the commitment of PDP to safeguard the mandate given to it at the state level. In Abuja, Ignatius Nkwo, NTA News. On the 2nd of March 2011, former President Gitlak Jonathan signed into law the National Institute for Legislative Studies, NILS Act 2011. Four years on, and with the ending of the 7th National Assembly, the tenure of the first NILS Governing Council, chaired by the outgoing Deputy Senate President, also comes to a close. National Assembly correspondent Dennis Adegmuloyo reports on the valedictory session held to honor the outgoing council. There have been highs, there have been lows, as with any venture, but as attested to by members of the National Institute for Legislative Studies Governing Council, those highs far outweigh the lows. It is the one arsenal we have for the development of democracy in this country, building institutional memory. Outgoing Alternative Chairman Nils Governing Council, Emeka Ihedioha was privileged to be part of realizing the concept of enhancing the knowledge, professionalism, and capacity of legislators. As we bow out today as a council, 
It is our fervent wish that the Eighth Assembly and the incoming Governing Council will build on our successes and take the institute to greater heights. Outgoing Chairman of the Governing Council, Senator Ike Ikwerimadu, was humbled by the shows of appreciation for his leadership, fairness and expertise. I would like to thank you for all your support and encouragement all these uh, four years. I consider all of you as my friends, my brothers, my allies for life. Director General of NILS, Dr. Ladi Hamalai, who also received special mention for her doggedness and drive in bringing the institute to the fore of the legislature, equally commended the chairman. I've learned a lot from him, his zeal and attitude to work, his intelligence, guidance, his level of wisdom has nurtured not only me as a director general of the institute, but also nurtured the whole institute to success. And as a mark of gratitude for her successes so far recorded, the director general was reappointed for another four-year term. Supported by Dr. Hamalai, Senator Ekorimadu presented members with awards for their service. From the National Assembly, Dennis Adignui, NTA News. Executive Director of the United Nations Population Fund, UNFPA, Professor Babatunde Oshutime, has urged the federal government to eliminate child marriage in order to reduce maternal mortality to the barest minimum in the country. Professor Oshutime stated this at the News Agents of Nigeria Forum in Abuja. Child marriage. Let's stop it. Because if you eliminate that, if you get the girls to go to school, stay in school, to maturity, and you educate them and give them good nutrition and health, you actually reduce this considerably. Now, so I'm not going to blame the health sector for that. I'm going to say that the health sector, working with various other sectors, would have to work there. Also citing early marriage as a major cause of vesicle vestibular fistula, VVF, among young women, the UNFPA executive director said that the fund had globally assisted in rendering necessary support to the affected young women, in addition to the elimination of child marriage, ensuring that difficult deliveries and access to good quality health care is stressed should also be of utmost priority. Governor Erofai of Kaduna State embarks on a mission to state. Abdullah Hirigachikun from Kaduna Network Center tells us more and other stories making the round from that end. Abdullah, it is over to you now. Many thanks, Runke, and welcome to Kaduna Network Center. To strengthen the Nigeria Industrial Revolution Plan, the United Nations Industrial Development Organization brought together stakeholders to build their capacity on investment project appraisal. Correspondent Indenyang and Deba Gyang completes this report. The five-year plan was launched last year by the federal government to accelerate industrialization, especially in sectors that Nigeria has global and regional comparative advantage. They include agro-allied metals, and solid mineral sectors among others. With NIRP, the government projects to double non-oil exports by 2017. To achieve this, the United Nations Industrial Development Organization brought NIRP managers to build their capacity towards implementation of the plan. The Director, Industrial Development and Inspectorate Department, Federal Ministry of Industry, Omotonwa Awobukun, while commending UNEDU for their support, noted that NRRP is the answer to Nigeria's industrialization. We are already hitting the ground running. The sugar uh, industry sector is another success story. So it is very, very important that we have the required capacity. On their part, officials of UNEDO said for the first time, Nigeria has a comprehensive document that will ensure industrial development. The officer in charge of UNEDO Abuja, Chuma Ezedimma, said so far, a national industrial skills gap assessment is being undertaken in the country. We need to refocus our mind to those skills that are required to develop uh, these critical sectors. What we're trying to do here is develop a team, which the NIRP team, which can do the analytical studies and provide those studies to political decision makers. 
The five-day workshop will, among other things, equip participants on how to appraise industrial projects from the viewpoint of the private investor and the overall economy. In Kaduna, I am Indian and Abagyang, NTA News. Governor Nasrul Ahmed El Rufai of Kaduna State has promised to facilitate the decongestion of prisons in the state with a view to releasing inmates with minor offenses. The governor stated this at an interactive session with Islamic scholars in Kaduna. Correspondent Muhammad Lord Baba has the details. Records have shown that prisons in Kaduna State are congested with over 2,000 inmates awaiting trial and suspects mostly with minor offenses. He described the situation unjustifiable and waste on human resource the state and country needs to develop. The governor unfolded the plan by his administration to work with stakeholders to congest the prisons. The governor was specific on the needs of clerics in the state to assist him turn around the fortunes of the state. Sheikh Raibi Udaura, who spoke on their behalf, said their role is to preach and pray for a better society, a leader's success in their assigned duties. He advised Governor Erufai to carry everybody along, irrespective of his leanings. In Kaduna, Muhammad Lawal Baba, NTA News. The Archbishop of, Kad of the Anglican Diocese of Kaduna, Most Reverend Josiah Ido Ferron, has emphasized the need for President Muhammad Buhari to come up with action plans that will impact positively on the petroleum and power sectors of the economy, as well as sanitize the armed forces within the first six months in office. He stated this at the first session of the 28th Synod of the Diocese of Kaduna Anglican Communion. Correspondent Mary Epenyo has more. While commending the president for his resilience and commitment to his goals, which have become a benchmark for Nigerians to remain focused, he further urged the president to hold his faith and teachings of the Quran and Hadith on pluralism of religion to ensure that he guard himself against selfish and corrupt politicians and called for persecution of those found guilty of corruption by the EFCC. The era of non-performance is ebbing. The arrogance of non-accountability is almost ending, and the spirit of impunity is being seriously challenged by Nigerians. He, however, commended the former president, good luck Ebele Jonathan, and described him as a brave man whose singular action has saved Nigeria as a nation. To Kaduna State Governor, the prelates urged him to see the many tribes of the state as an asset. Almost every major tribe is represented here, in addition to all the very many ethnic and tribal groups in Zone 3 of the state. We have always looked up to our governors here as national leaders. The senior Jew delegates from Sokoto, Duse, Kebi, Kano, Kwantagura, Zonkua, Kwai, as well as Zaria. In Kaduna, Mary Ekneyong, NTA News. The Commandant Armed Forces Command and Staff College Judge, Air Vice Marshal John Chris Ifemeji, has urged officers and soldiers who participated in the Operation Ubiaki Sin to utilize the experience gained for the development of the nation. He said this in a message to the closing of the exercise organized for Junior Course 79 of the college. Correspondent Muhammad Lol Baba reports. Represented by Deputy Commandant Armed Forces Command and Staff College Judge, Rear Admiral Silvanos Agada Abba, the Commandant said the aim of the exercise is to prepare the participant on how to confront and attack enemies at war. Our training has taken care of all this so that when it is time for action, whatever they have learned, they will put it into practice. He said the curriculum of the exercise has been reviewed with the introduction of counterinsurgency in tune with what is obtainable globally. About 140 officers participated in the exercise. In Kaduna, Muhammad Lawal Baba, NTA News. And that is our contribution from Kaduna Network Center. It's back to you, Runke, for more on Nationwide. Thank you, Abdullahi. We now take a break. Nationwide continues shortly. Stay with us.
This is to inform ministries, departments, agencies of the federal government, state and local governments, corporate bodies, private organizations, embassies, diplomatic missions, and individuals interested in the official portraits of the president-elect, Muhammad Buhari, and vice president-elect, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, to apply to the Federal Ministry of Information for soft copies of the portraits at no cost. Applications should be sent to the Permanent Secretary, Federal Ministry of Information, Radio House, Abad Makoliwe, Garki Abuja, or Veronica Adeyemo at fedcs.gov.ng, or Marcos Amulume at fedcs.gov.ng. For further inquiries, contact Mr. Peter Dama, Director of Protocol and Public Relations, or call 080-3318-4875 or 080-5967-3861. Announcer, Permanent Secretary, Federal Ministry of Information. Come to Sharon Ultimate Hotels, Abuja, the ultimate place to be. the message of hope across the land stay together as one all the obstacles would disappear let's open up our hearts let's open up our eyes and cherish this piece of the earth that God has given us The Nigerian Television Authority, in partnership with the Albino Foundation, celebrate the maiden edition of the UN International Albinism Awareness Day on 13th June 2015. The International Albinism Awareness Day, aimed at reducing human rights abuses against persons with albinism, will feature an albinism walk, workshop, gala night, and lots more. Be part of this. Sponsor this noble cause. For sponsorship details, please call. NTA Television College Jos, the leading institution in television broadcasting training in Nigeria, offers you the opportunity to become a professional broadcaster. On the news tonight, available courses, two years diploma course in television journalism, television production and television engineering. The college also offers short courses for a period of six to eight weeks in the following areas. Basic television journalism, political reporting, online journalism, basic television production, camera operation techniques, basic television presentation, non-linear editing, animation, videography and photography, professional makeup techniques, research and marketing techniques, advanced lighting energy conservation, advanced web design technology, satellite and DSNG equipment maintenance. 
Our courses are open to media personnel in public and private television stations, corporate organizations, state and federal purse titles, tertiary institution and interested individuals. We have molded many. Come and join the list of the professionals for a rewarding future. For details, please call 0803721 0803-594-1444. Email television.college at yahoo.com. Announcer Management. Thanks for being there. Following the passage of the bill on the establishment of the Diaspora Commission by the Senate, members of the All Progressive Congress APC in the Diaspora have honored the outgoing chairman, House Committee on Diaspora, Abike Dabirewa, with an award of excellence in tackling issues affecting Nigerians in the Diaspora. Correspondent Gabriel Odu reports. The All Progressive Congress diaspora members who came for the presidential inauguration are optimistic that the needed change is here to stay, hence the need for Nigerians to embrace it. On why they decided to honor Abike Dabri Erewa, APC Chairman, United States, Tony Esama, has this to say. Uh, she's gone to visit Nigerians that are serving in prisons. Uh, she's also visited uh, people that have been that some measures when our brother got ill. In this government of change, we believe we have the talents, we have the expertise in the critical areas that Nigeria needs in its development. On the passage of the bill on the establishment of the Diaspora Commission, Abike Dabri said it is a welcome development. Be that one-stop agency to deal with diaspora matters and then look at the enormous talents that we have all over the world. It's amazing what Nigerians, Nigerians are doing all over the world. We shouldn't waste you know, those talents and those enormous human resources. In Abuja, Gabriel Odu, NTN News. A former Federal Commissioner for Information, Chief Edwin Clark, has called on Nigerians to support the government of President Muhammadu Buhari for the new administration to succeed. Chief Clark stated this when he was presented an honorary membership and lifetime achievement award by the President, Property Ambassadors Organization of Nigeria. Correspondent Ifai Izumba has the details. The president, Property Ambassadors Organization of Nigeria, Abubakar Salawu, said the reason for the award is to appreciate the landmark achievement and the huge sacrifice Chief Clark made over the years, which they believe is justifiable and remarkable. We see him as an elder statesman who believes in the unity and our interconnectedness in Nigeria. He believes our diversity is a we for development. The ambassadors for property have they recognized his leadership qualities and he has signified his intention to work with President Muhammad Buhari, respective of party, tribal or ethnic inclination. Receiving the award, which he believes is unique, Chief Clark stressed that the award came at a time he least expected. He reminded Nigerians that in every election there must be losers and winners. And whoever wins, the people must embrace. The president of Nigeria the president of southern Nigeria is president of the whole country. The former Federal Commissioner for Information also urged Nigerians to forget the past and join hands to move the nation forward. In Abuja, Ifani Izumba, NT News. Professor Monday Tommy Joshua has assumed office as the substantive executive secretary of the National Commission for Colleges of Education. A statement by Suleiman Garuba, deputy director, public relations, directorate of the commission, indicates that Professor Monday Joshua, until his was the Registrar National Examination Council, NECO. It asks that Monday Joshua, a professor of education research, measurement and evaluation from the University of Calabar, has been involved in the production of teachers and human development for the past 30 years. More foreign investors in Benue states who generate income. This and more from Makudi Network Center with Pam as our guide. Pam. It is over to you. Welcome to Makudi. 
The Benue State Governor Samuel Otom says the state government will partner with foreign investors for speedy development of infrastructure and other, in other sectors. The governor said this when he received officials of a Chinese company at the government house, Makuli. In correspondent, Gracie Chepa has details. Dr. Samuel Otom said, despite the challenges confronting the state, Benue has a large land mass and fertile soil for agricultural and infrastructural development. The governor, while signing the Memorandum of Understanding with a Chinese company, noted he is looking forward to partnering with foreign investors, especially in the areas of power generation and construction of roads across the state to boost the economy. Uh, for us, the challenges we have here in all these areas where we have indicated interests Earlier, the leader of the Chinese delegation, Zhu Dongsheng, said the company has partnered with other countries of the world and executed projects that have brought development to their partners. The Chinese company specializes in construction of roads, airports, housing and agriculture, among others. In Makudi, Grace Ichepa, NTA News. Meanwhile, Taraba State Governor Darius Dixon Ishaku has called on civil servants to be committed to duty and render selfless service to the state. The governor made a call while swearing in the newly appointed secretary to the state government, Anthony Jellison. Correspondent Christy Ayagwa Daji has details. Taraba State Governor Darius Dixon Ishaku, while swearing in Mr. Anthony Jellison as the secretary to the state government, said the office of the SSG is imperative to any government since its coordinating role is governance. As a people, we need extra energy and extra commitment to bring the state out of these predicaments. In his post-inaugural speech, the new SSG, Anthony Jellison, appreciated the state government for the confidence reposed on him. The oath of office on the new SSG was administered by the state chief judge, Justice Josephine Tuktu. Similarly, the secretary to the state government, while taking over the mantle of leadership from the former SSG, called on all civil servants to accord government the needed support and work hard for the development of the state. In Jalingo, Christy Ayagwa Adaji, NTA News. And that will be it from Makudi. Ronkets over to you for the rest of Nationwide. Good afternoon. Thank you, Pam. It is unanimous that the Nigerian oil and gas sector can no longer be run in a business as usual manner. Whatever reason one may attribute to this position, two major points stand out. Unreliable revenue from oil and the need for good governance in operations. Over now to energy correspondent Hawa Salihu Adama for an extra of the issues. Experts have described it as a normal occurrence which happens once in every decade. Yet the unexpected fall in the price of crude oil from over $100 per barrel to an all-time low of about $40 in the last one year is a major concern. A concern which threw many oil-producing nations, especially in Nigeria, off balance. One which emphasized the need for diversification of the revenue base and a more prudent approach to resources. If we are able to diversify, there will be less pressure on the oil industry. We are looking forward to um, a structured government process. With over 187 trillion cubic feet of gas reserves, a cleaner fuel, and said to be three times Nigeria's crude oil, efforts have been on to make Nigerians benefit maximally from this resource, particularly in domestic power generation and industrialization. There are critical pipeline infrastructure that we have to focus upon uh, to unleash uh, access to the market. The next leg now, which is basically uh, the uh, Kalaba Ajahuta Kano, which opens up a completely new frontier, is one that we need to give priority to. Then private investment will take over mostly and be able to get this gas 
for power generation. Uh, you can also build uh, different gas plants like uh, methanol plants. Uh, you can uh, do uh, what we call fertilizer plants today, urea plants. Uh, you can do quite a lot. In the short term, one issue majority believe demands urgent attention is the heavy dependence on importation of refined petroleum products with its attendant effects of occasional scarcity. We have been on the queue to get fuel. That obviously we shouldn't have done that. But what we are pleading to the, uh, to the government is that they should put something in place to make sure that they don't trouble the poor people who can assess the fuel does not have problem getting it. This site, which now dots major towns and cities across Nigeria, may be described as a temporary manifestation of a frustrated people. But as experts say, until concrete plans are put in place and implemented to address the local refining capacity, it may just be another nightmare for the new administration. Voting this nightmare, energy experts say, could come in form of establishment of modular refineries, stiff penalties for vendors of petroleum pipelines to ensure their effectiveness and less dependence on tracking of products, as well as the regulation of the downstream subsector and outright removal of subsidy on petrol. Comprehensive document expected to repeal about 16 outdated pieces of petroleum laws and inject transparency into operations now known as the Petroleum Industry Bill has made three journeys to the National Assembly. With the 7th Assembly at its twilight, what hope is there for the Petroleum Industry Bill? In Abuja, Hawa Salihu, Adama, NTA News. A very good question there, Hawa. I know oil and gas is not rocket science. We are hopeful that something tangible will be done by the new administration. And now from the foreign scene, Burundi government postpones parliamentary and presidential elections and Egyptian court orders the retrial of former President Hosni Mubarak. This and more on Global Tidbits with Talatu Izrike. Burundi's parliamentary and presidential elections were earlier slated for this month, but the government has to postpone due to pressure from African and Western governments following a series of protests and even failed coup attempt since President Pere Nkurunziza indicated interest for a third term bid. In Egypt, the last has not been heard of former President Hosni Mubarak legal predicament. An appeal court has ordered him to stand trial again over the killing of protesters in 2011. The former 87 year old president is currently in a military hospital in Cairo. From Ghana, a patrol station in Fenon has led to the death of 90 people. And Google apologizes after India Prime Minister Modi photos started appearing in the image search results for 10 top criminals. That is all on Global Tidbits. Talat Izariki, NTA News. Guests on NTA's current affairs program, Good Morning Nigeria, say Nigeria requires a formidable football governing body that will be recognized by law to rekindle the country's football potentials. This is as the world football governing body, FIFA, is currently battling with leadership challenges as its president, Sepp Blatter, resigns in the wake of alleged corruption practices. Salihu Abdullahi has the details. FIFA's president, Sepp Blatter's notice to resign the position he hold since 1998 has been generating mixed reactions, especially among soccer fans across the globe. Sports analysts on the program say the planned resignation by FIFA president was the right step to restore confidence in the world football governing body. The process, they added, will facilitate free investigation into alleged corrupt practices in FIFA. This is a game that drives on the players. It is a game that survives on the followership of supporters. These two groups are not represented anywhere in FIFA. You don't find, Sir Blatter didn't play football. Hayatou didn't play football. And that is why a lot of misnomers have been overlooked by FIFA. By FIFA regulation, by FIFA statutes, Nigeria does not today have a single football club. Everybody forgets that FIFA is a non-profit organization. 
So it's the biggest and the most profitable NGO in the world. They want similar reform replicated in the Confederation of African Football, CAF and Nigeria's Football Federation, NFF, to boost Africa's soccer image and encourage participation by all. To have a proper football governing body in Nigeria, what we need to do, is just as FIFA has done in Switzerland, is to incorporate this body we say is NFF, incorporate it as a corporate affairs commission. The issue of integrity has to be enshrined in the statute. We need to re-examine the statute, make it compliant with what is practicable. FIFA is responsible for the organization of football's major international tournaments, notably the World Cup, which commenced in 1930, and the Women's World Cup, which commenced in 1991. In Abuja, Salihu Abdullahi, NTA News. And still talking football, Flying Eagles fly over North Korea to get back on track at the FIFA Under-20 Championship in New Zealand as French Open enters its business end. Let's join Ayodeji Makinde for this and more on Sports Update. That is the latest development from our news desk. Join us at 7 for more reports and the network news at 9. I am Ronke Kolawali. Thanks for being there.